So the next thing that I will do is install the rod bearings. And you can see the little notch, and you got the little notch in the rod. They got to match together. Be careful because you don't want to mar up the bearing surface. Slide it in. So that little notch matches up. And everything's straight and square. And you want to take a little bit of oil. Put it on that surface like you're not going to take this back apart because this section we will not be planning on taking back apart unless we run into an issue someplace. Get the rod square. You can use the side of the crankshaft which is uh, pretty much machine square to be able to do that and then use your back of your hammer to slowly bring that up into position tapping on the piston watching the rod surface so that the rod bolt does not touch the actual bearing surface on the crankshaft and when you get it fairly close you can stop and hold it this way obviously if you keep the one that you is closest to you so that it doesn't touch and it's within an eighth of an inch the other one's not going to be touching on the opposite side either tight and you'll hear the difference in sound when it gets there. And you can put the other half of the bearing into the lower section of the rod. That one we do not want to put any oil on because that one we're going to plastic gauge. So now we'll move over to the opposite side to cylinder number two. Pull that rod up and slide that bearing into place. Now on mine, my measurements were all, the measurements that I took with the micrometer I should say, were all around two thousandths. So I did not do anything with this crank other than chamfer the oil holes and clean it up with some emery cloth so now that we've got that bearing in place now we can bring piston number two up again slowly so that we don't bang the rod bolts into the rod bearing journal surface and the reason I don't use a piece of rubber over these is because it needs to be a fairly thin piece of rubber so I could you can but if you're careful and you take your time, you're going to be okay. Biggest thing when you're coming up there too is again to make sure that you're square and straight. I can see that this rod is not coming up exactly perfect. So I need to turn it a little bit before I start pounding on it and ruin a bearing. So I'm just going to get this in here. Turn that piston just a little bit. And now I'm ready to come back up the rest of the way. And there's home. So now both of the pistons are at their bottom dead center. Piston number one and piston number two. And now I can put the other 
bearing in. Make sure that your bearings don't have any dirt on them either or any kind of debris. So now I have cut two pieces of one to three thousandths inch plastic edge and I'm going to lay them across the surface where I'm going to put the rod caps in. And your two ends match. When I took this apart, I uh, actually mark across the number across here with a punch so that I know which surfaces line up with which surfaces. I like to do that so that I know that everything goes back together correctly. And now I'm ready to snug those up just by hand. You want to bring these down evenly. Now remember we're going to be taking this back apart to be able to verify our plastic gauge. Take it down evenly. You can see the open ends, so you just take it down until you get to the point of no torque. You're basically taking it down just to close in the open ends. Do the same for both rods. Again, taking it down evenly. Okay, so at this point now, now we can torque it, and again, we're going to torque in a sequence of three. So, torque on a small block Chevy rod bolt cap is 45 foot-pounds. So I'm going to start out at 20, which is what my torque wrench is set for. 20 isn't much. And again, take it easy, evenly. I'm just going by feel right now. And I know I'm not even close to 20, so. And then once you get it to the point where you're, you're ready to torque, and there it was, I just reached 20 foot-pounds. 20 foot-pounds on the other one. 20 foot pounds on that one and 20 foot pounds on that one. So both cylinders 1 and 2 are torqued to 20 foot pounds. Now I'm going to go up to 40 foot pounds. You get a click. Okay, and now we're going to take it up to the final torque, which is 45. So right now I'm set at 45. Then go back through again at 45.
I didn't get any turn on either one of those, so I know I'm good there. Nothing there. Nothing there. Perfect. So now we're at 45 foot pounds on both of those bolts. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to break those loose, take the caps off, and verify what the clearance is, and I'll come back at that point in time after I got the bearing caps off.